The government is very worried in this trial that witnesses are going to be intimidated. Uh, they right. actually submitted a document about that yesterday, I believe, basically saying, look, witnesses might try to plead the fifth. Witnesses might, you know, witnesses that we're bringing on who are supposed to implicate these guys might try to get out of it at the last minute because they're scared. And they basically asked the judge for permission to, if a witness does that and flips what they're going to say, to treat the witness as hostile and basically kind of go after them. And, the, you know, the judge pretty much gave them permission to do that. So it's... Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, sorry. Wait, that, did that just hear you right? Wait, what? I'm so sorry. The, the feds are worried that their witnesses may be intimidated. Right. And plead the fifth or change their story or something while they're on the stand. Right. And they basically went to the judge and said, look, if that happens, do we have your permission to treat these guys as hostile witnesses? And the judge said, yes. So that wonder, hasn't happened yet, but they are worried that it might. I wonder what that would look like. Hostile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Jeez. So, you know, so the, that's the big thing with, with Rincon, right? He lays out his history with Jay. He says, I was there. This is what happened. It was these two guys. One of them kind of threatened me afterwards. I was confused. I was scared. That's why I didn't say any names for, you know, many, many years. Then eventually I moved out of state. It had been a while. I thought Jay's family should have closure. That's why I'm telling the truth now. Um, you can imagine, of course, what kind of approach the defense lawyers had, right? They basically said, look, you over and over again said you didn't see the face of the of the killer. Right. You know, essentially the, the implication being, why should we believe you now? Mm. Um, and they tried to dismiss the, the threatened aspect of it. They basically said, look, he asked you if you saw who did it. So did cops, so did journalists, you know, were they threatening you? Mm. Were your family and friends who asked you what happened? Were they threatening you? You know, why should you take that as a threat? Right? They tried to kind of downplay the the threat angle, basically. Right. So they they kept hammering on the fact that he basically lied at the crime scene. He lied at the hospital. He lied a few days later when he went to the p police precinct. You know, he lied to a reporter. He lied at... The, you know, the first time he talked to the feds in 2016, all of these times saying like, I didn't see that it was these two guys. So that was pretty much the, the defense's approach. Right, oh, let me stop you there. there. Obviously for the audience, this is for the audience. So they're obviously, you know, um, put, putting doubt on, uh, raising doubt and that's their job. But as well, that's something that I always heard, not only from, from about, well, that's something I always heard from about the witnesses that they were scared that they were being threatened. They were scared to come forward and say this information. Um, that's something to keep in mind just for the for the audience. These these guys that are on trial, they're allegedly dangerous folks, so they have a reason to be scared. Mm -hmm.